Hello there. All right, today we're going to take a look at uh, Substances Bitmap to Material, or B2M. Uh, this is a great little tool for if you've got a, a really good uh, photo reference image that you just want to turn quickly into a, a material. Um, or if you've got, as we have, some, some older style uh, textures that you've created in Photoshop, uh, such as we have over here with this treasure chest uh, UV layout. So this old layout, I mean, we got shadows and, and all kinds of stuff baked in here, and this was great if we were putting on a on kind of a flat model in an older style game engine. Uh, but here we want to get into we want to adapt this into something a little more robust for some of the uh, physicality based rendering that we can do now. So without further ado, I'm just going to come over here to bitmap to material. Um, it really is fairly simple even though you can spend days playing with with settings over here so I'm just going to drag in my my rendered uh, texture here so this fantasy treasure chest and just load that in the main input and it didn't take because I didn't click fast enough drag it in load it into the main input um, and you can see we've got a preview down here already this is kind of what it looks like um, and there's already a little more definition. I don't know if you can see it or not. Um, what's happening is it's taking that main input and we've made a now a roughness map. Let me pull this down here so we can look. And this defines, as it sounds, how rough each material is. Um, we've got a metallic, which we're going to get back to later. We've got a normal map, um, even a, a height map, and an ambient occlusion map, uh, which is really um, when we're, when we're inside an engine or any kind of a uh, rendered environment, these darker shadows say the light can't shine as well in here. And that works out really well for stuff like this keyhole. So even if we shine, shone a light straight at it, it would kind of remain dark. It wouldn't reflect and, and that kind of thing back at us. For the most part, um, just dragging that bitmap in gives us all these different maps and is mostly what we need but we are going to have to do a little more work as I said on this metallic piece. Um, so metallic map basically said it really operates on kind of a black and white type of a scale um, and black it would be a dielectric uh, component which in this case would be wood basically anything that's not metal um, and won't reflect light uh, as much as metal would and so this metallic map could be considered also kind of a kind of a reflection map, uh, but what we want to do is we want to define um, for bitmap to material here what here is metal and what isn't. So I'm going to go back into Photoshop, and I've got my my final texture here and all the layers I used to create it. I'm going to go back to the original UV map, and I'm just going to use that. I'm going to hide this jazz. Um, really, almost everything here is metal except for these uh, darker blue components. So I'm just going to grab those and I'm going to create a new layer. Drag this up above the UV map. Um, I'm going to call it non metal. And we're just going to want to fill that with a black. And that didn't, that didn't fill because I. I got too excited and clicked too fast. All right, we'll just fill it then. We'll do it this way. Fill that with black, and so that won't reflect. And really, the rest we could do is white um, to say everything else is reflective. Kind of this gray part, if you'll recall, there's there's really nothing that uses that. Everything that's in the in the uh, light blue here would be metal. We probably Maybe you don't want the keyhole to reflect either, so we can we can add that to our non-metal map. I'm going to go ahead and grab that, and it's grabbing everything. There, I just want the keyhole selection. I'm going to pull pull that up to my non-metal side and fill that. And then here in layer one, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna fill that up with white. And so we've got a definition of what's metal and what's not. Now what we could do, um, and I could hide this UV map, and I could take this white 
and kind of pull the fill down a little bit. And so you can see we've got varying degrees here as, a, as I'm pulling this around. Uh, white means it's it's a nice shiny metal and very reflective. Usually we use in, it would just work in black and white. Occasionally we will want some levels of gray um, in our metallic map, meaning this is metal that's got a thin layer of dirt over it. Um, and for the whole thing, it wouldn't make sense. But if we knew we had like a dirt patch right up in here, we could make that little spot gray. Or if we knew there was dirt in all these grooves here, we could leave that gray. Um, I think I think we'll just leave it fully white. Yeah, we'll do that. So we're going to say that's our metallic map. I'm going to save this. As a PNG that I can drag back into B2M. All right, so I'm back over here. I've got this nice metallic map now. I'm going to drag it over. I want to load it in the Okay, didn't want to do it that, we'll do it here. There we go. So I drug it in there, but it wasn't reflecting, so I had to come down here into this into this sidebar and say, hey, go from the metallic input. And if I can drag this up a little bit, we should be able to see as we pan around that the metal pieces are getting a bit more reflection and the wood is staying kind of dull um, and basically that's what we would do. And we, we could, again, we could adjust all this. We could say um, there's dirt on the metal up to a certain amount and it wouldn't be as shiny. Actually, let me go back. You can kind of see it pulling those values in up top. We'll say it's not a dirty treasure chest. This has been well cared for. There's a lot of good stuff in it. Um, The ambient occlusion looks good, maybe a little too dark in some areas, but we're at least not going to get a lot of light in these areas and these grooves here. Uh, one final thing before we export all this, if you are working in bitmap to material um, on a specific mesh, um, such as we are here, and we're not just defining some kind of a, a random brick pattern, which you can easily do using this, um, we can load in custom geometry, so I'm going to go ahead and load in a mesh to see what exactly this is going to look like. I'm going to drop that on my desktop. So I'll go grab that. That gives us an even better view of what the final uh, output materials are going to do. So as you can see, we've got some nice shine between the metallic and that ambient occlusion map um, we should have some dullness there in that keyhole this is a good angle you can see a lot of the shine here on the metal and then again it's just not as much on the wood and that's that's what bitmap to material gets us um, and like any good cooking show um, i already have this finished out that we can look at. Um, but before I do that, let me just go to the export. So we've got all these channels now. We can export as bitmap. And they're all going to go into apparently my Blender folder. I can tell that to go. And you can see we're going to have all these different maps. So we'll get an opacity and emissive. We don't need half of these, but um, if it's going to give it to us for free, might as well take it. And then I'd like to keep this in the PNG family. So I'm going to go grab that instead of the Targa. Uh, and we get a bump map, displacement, height, normal. We won't use all of these, especially when we go into Unity. But they're all here if you need them for other projects. So that's how I would export those. And it would it would push them all out as, well, I'll just export them and we can go look. All right, you can see it's bitmap to material 3, opacity. We should have changed that 
instead of that to like treasure chest or whatever. But these are all the maps that are now on my desktop that we can use and we will use those as such later on in another project. Uh, I'm going to go into Unity here and give you an idea of what those maps do. So here's the original treasure chest with just the UV on it. Um, here is simply the, the texture uh, that we output in Photoshop uh, with all the shadows and bumping and all that. Here it is one level up. I went ahead and in Photoshop, I created the normal map um, as you would have for an assignment as well. As so this is just the texture plus the normal map. Um, and then here is the, here finally is everything with all the different materials that we got out of um, bitmapped material. And so we've got a lot of shine. We've got some height map on this, which you can play with. Um, and you can see that it's, even using that height map, it actually disrupts and, and changes the mesh and makes things actually extrude out. So that's fun. And yeah, that's that's what we get with bitmap to material. We can take a simple texture that would have looked just like this, really spruce it up, um, give it a lot of reflection and, and again that physicality based rendering. So when we get into an engine like this and imagine we're in a, you know, we're in a dungeon, we're in a dark hall and we're carrying around a candlelight, um, this particular treasure chest will really shine, um, literally, and, and have a lot of cool reflection and, and just realism to it as opposed to this flatter model, um, which was still a cool texture, but just doesn't have the same level of depth. All right, that is bitmapped material and that's kind of the fun stuff you can do with it. Um, outside of the exporting that bitmap, um, that's it. Uh, I'm not aware of a way to save um, this project as such. And so when I close it out and open it back up again, it'll look just like we, we had before. And I'd have to reload a new map and a new mesh. But there it is. And that's just one more cool little tool that we get to use um, when we're making games and cool 3D objects.